All right, you know what? Let's react to this. Let's react to this TYT thing. I want to see what they had to say about this. I haven't talked about Ukraine for a while. Let's let's react to this. Let's do a react. Let's see. President Biden has informed the G7 allies here that the United States has agreed to allow Ukrainian pilots to begin training to fly American-made F-16 fighter jets. This move represents a major reversal for Biden and a wish fulfilled for Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, who has pleaded for F-16s for months. Oh, goody, an escalation of war. Now, in this case, uh, as you heard in that report, the Biden administration will now allow our European allies to transfer American-made F-16s to Ukraine, something that was considered a red line by the Biden administration previously, especially when we're dealing with another nuclear power, Russia. Okay, hold on a second. Oh, whoa, 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 you know, Ukraine doesn't have a significant air power whatsoever. Russia does. Russia is flying jets into Ukraine and dropping shit all over. Let me just see, hold on, hold on. According to a report from last year, the entire Ukrainian Air Force had just 124 combat capable aircraft. 124 combat capable aircraft in the entire Ukrainian Air Force. Hold on, let's see. According to, according to a report uh, from 2022, Russia has 370 MiG-29s, uh, MiG-29, MiG-31s, and MiG-35s, and 350 Su-27s, Su-30s, and Su-35s. So they have uh, somewhere over uh, like, like seven, uh, 720 jets versus Ukrainians' 124 total combat aircraft. Is that an escalation or is that an evening out of the stakes? Because to me, it seems like that's not really giving a couple of jets to the side that has no jets, the side that was was being invaded. It's not, does not seem to me to be a mega escalation. <laughs> What the? Well, okay, look, I understand. Again, okay, I want to be a hundred percent clear about this. This is something I've said about Ukraine from the very beginning. I can understand people being concerned um, about the like downstream effects of putting American weaponry anywhere. Okay, I can. I genuinely can understand concerns about that. For example. Um, the United States has in the history of, of uh, in the history of the world often armed uh, strategically armed groups that ended up being really bad. Like for example, the Taliban. Uh, the United States gave a lot of munitions to the Taliban, which gave them enough power to later become combatants that ended up taking over and instituting a, a deranged, you know, uh, a hyper religious, uh, order in Afghanistan. Of course, there was much more that happened in Afghanistan. That's not the only thing that happened. But the United States has a history of uh, carelessly giving out weapons. However, to call giving jets to the side that was invaded by an aggressive imperial power, Russia is an aggressive imperial power that invaded Ukraine. Russia has 720 known jets versus Ukraine's 124, calling that an escalation with the sarcastic tone really seems very slanted and misleading to me. That seems like you're trying to, that really sends a message of, of, of what you think about the plight of the people in Ukraine who are fucking being invaded by the, by a, a, a absolutely aggressive power to the, you know, to their east, their yeah, they're east and northeast. Like, 
I, I don't know. <laughs> Let's continue. And of course, Vladimir Putin has responded to this by threatening nuclear war with the United States, which is unsurprising. It's not the first time he's done it, but you know, maybe send- oh, Okay, wait, wait a second. This is another thing. I don't mean to just immediately pause Andrea, but this is another thing that weirds me out. I always find it weird when people use the fact that Putin is threatening nuclear war as like a argument ag against resisting Putin. Doesn't the fact that Putin is willing to threaten nuclear war, isn't that a sign that this guy is totally irrational and completely willing to literally end the world over a territorial struggle? Isn't that an argument against Putin? Why do they use it like it's an argument for Putin? Like, I know they'll say that it's like, oh, well, I'm urging caution, but that's a really weird way to urge caution, to be like, Putin said he was gonna nuke the world. That's why we should let Ukraine get bowled over and conquered. What? What the fuck? over offensive weaponry to Ukraine, not the best idea. And there is no end in sight for this war. In fact, the idea of sending F-16s to Ukraine makes it abundantly clear that the United States and its allies intend to continue engaging in this war for at least 18 months, possibly more because there's some training necessary in order to ensure that members of Ukraine's military are able to operate F-16s. Well, obviously the United States and its allies are going to be involved in this fucking conflict because Putin has threatened the world with nuclear destruction and is invading a neighboring country that borders NATO nations. Obviously, like, what are you talking about? Obviously they're gonna be involved. Putin chose to invade a Putin chose to invade a neighboring country that immediately, and then also is threatening the world with nuclear war. What are you talking about? Well, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? What is this shit? This sounds like Jimmy Dore stupidity. Like if you're in get, gonna engage in a conversation about uh, about global struggle, struggle and and nuclear war. I really, really, really do feel like you should take it more seriously than just like, I don't know, making like, uh, oh my God, the United States is interested in the future of the struggle in Ukraine? Yeah, fucking obviously, obviously they are. Yes, obviously. We'll get to all those details in just a moment. Now, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has been asking for F-16 since the beginning of this war in the United States under Biden's leadership had refused to do so. They saw it as an escalation of war. The next video has some more details on this. The F-16, the backbone of the US air fleet can travel twice the speed of sound, drop bombs on ground targets and fire air to air missiles. Ukraine believes these planes provide a distinct advantage in the skies, enabling them to shoot down incoming cruise missiles and fighter jets, fending off Russia's punishing air assaults. But up till now, providing F-16s has been a red line for President Biden, reluctant to provoke an unpredictable escalation from Russia. Still, in a February interview with David, Biden did leave the door open just a crack. We know President Zelensky continues to say what he really needs are F-16s. Will you send F-16s? Look, we're sending him what our seasoned military thinks he needs now. You don't think he needs F-16s now? No, he doesn't need F-16s now. That was what he said in February, but clearly he has now changed his tune. Now, for the moment being, there's no indication that the United States is gonna transfer its, M, uh, its F-16s to Ukraine. It's just that our allies will be doing so, but let's keep it real. Eventually, the United States will be doing so as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. Uh, I, my source is the crystal ball. My source is the orb. I consulted the orb. Yeah, also that's the other thing too. 
keep in mind that our NATO allies, this is why I was saying that obviously the United States is going to take interest in Ukraine because our allies do as well. Nobody likes the idea of a country that borders a bunch of NATO nations being aggressively invaded by Russia and Russia fucking flattening civilian areas en masse. Uh, all the countries that neighbor that are rightfully going, what the fuck? That's insane. We need to, we need to make sure this doesn't come to us next. This is so embarrassing. God, it's so fucking embarrassing. Because it's an opportunity for, we know what it's an opportunity for. Send them more weapons. That creates a need for the United States to replenish its weaponry. And that means more money for the defense contractors who are absolutely salivating over this war that is now quickly becoming an endless war. And I'll explain more of that in just a moment. But Cenk, I wanted to give you an opportunity to jump in. Yeah. I un listen. I I love critiques of the military industrial com complex a lot. You guys know I fucking I play the games, I watch the movies. I love critiques of the industrial military industrial complex. But saying that that NATO allies giving their F16s to Ukraine creates a justification to replenish American supplies when she just said that it wasn't American F-16s that were being given. It was the, it was allied F-16s that Biden was okaying. He's saying, yeah, go ahead allies, you go ahead. I'm, I'm okay with this. That, that seems like, it seems like there's a missing step here. So guys, uh, the administration is partly worried about it because it's an escalation. I would say that's the minority concern. Uh, they're not really talking about the majority concern, which they mentioned in some articles, but they mentioned it in passing as if it's the smaller concern. I don't think so at all for reasons I'll explain here. The, the larger concern is they don't want the technology to fall into the uh, wrong hands, mainly the Russian hands. Because it's one thing for the Ukrainians to have an F-16, it's another thing for an F-16 to get shot down in area controlled by Russia, where they could then is just take true? the F-16 and reverse engineer it. Is that true though? That sounds like a, I don't know if that's true. I feel like that's like not true anymore. Like the differences in air technology is, it, I don't believe it's like literally like a knowledge gap. I think it's literally just like, uh, what type of like the it's a production gap right like undoubtedly chinese intelligence knows how we build our rockets undoubtedly russian intelligence knows how we build our rockets they just have a different manufacturing process like i i don't think there's like secret magical technology they haven't unlocked yet this sounds like um like stellaris logic you guys ever played a paradox game you know, where like if your ship gets blown up in enemy territory, they can send a science vessel over to scan it and steal your technologies. Like, I don't think that's how it works anymore. Like maybe in like World War II, but I don't think there's like a whole lot of secret technology in an F-16. When was the F-16 developed? Hold on, let me just, let me just confirm this. <laughs> Hold on, let's see. I wanna see, when was it originally developed? It was originally developed in 1974. The F-16 originally was manufactured for the US military in 19, 50 years ago. An F-16 is a 50 year old jet. You're trying to tell me that you think that Russia doesn't know how to perfectly copy an F-16 if they want to? Right, and so now you might think, well, okay, that's a real national security issue for us because F-16s are excellent and it's a rare thing we do right in the US military in terms of technology. And so that could be an- These ones would be the 1990s era upgrades. Yeah, but still, but, but still, 1990s? You're telling me that, that there are no Russian engineers that have figured out how to make a jet? 
No, I, I don't think that's the problem. I genuinely do not think that that's an issue. I don't think it's a tech difference problem. It's a production thing, right? Like, um, like our F-16s are better than some of the Russian jets because it's expensive to produce new ones. Not because of reverse engineering threats, but because the because the Russian uh, 720 jets of the Russian Air Force are, they already built those in the past and building new ones would cost an incredible amount of money and might require manufacturing capability that they can't swing. It's a um, economic thing. Panic Stasis says, Azer Azerbaijan has F-16s. I guarantee you the Russians have seen every piece of tech that's in them. It's, it's production that's the issue, that's the wall. The reason why Russian jets suck is because they don't have the, they don't have the money to invest in, in building out a new fleet because jets are crazy expensive to manufacture. It's not because they don't know how to make the technology. Alora says there are currently worries about the 1990s F-16s uh, being able to procure spare parts in U be for Ukraine because they're that old. Yeah, like it's a manufacturing problem, exactly. Mesmertize says this is a big thing with missiles as well. Missiles are super expensive and it takes multiple years to construct them. Running out of those is the real loss to the US military because they take a long time to produce. It's not about fucking scanning the enemy technology and them jumping forward into the into the internet age. That's fucking childish. Has 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 Jake been playing Stellaris or something? Has has Jake been playing Civilization 6 or something? What the fuck? National security problem for us. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit of a concern too. But the larger concern is the people that sell the F16 don't want anyone else to be able to produce cheaper F16s without going through them. Uh I Produce, you can't just produce, you can't just snap your fingers and produce cheaper jets. Russia has cheaper jets. They suck, they're cheaper because they were made a long time ago and making new ones is crazy expensive. What the hell? Hold on, I have to get this one, hold on. Here we go. This is what we need right here. You need the fucking star. You need the Starcraft. Uh, the Starcraft technology unlocked sounds. The Starcraft Academy unlocked sounds. Oh, that's the defense the contractors. Oh, that, you know what? That is the most important part of the story. How is this watchable? <laughs> Sorry, let me just rewind here so we can get their their weird reactions to this shit. The people that sell the F-16 don't want anyone else to be able to produce cheaper F-16s without going through them. Oh, I. E. That's the defense the contractors. Oh, that, you know what? That is the most important part of the story, guys. Yeah. I mean, God forbid that these defense contractors, these military manufacturers, I mean, I'm sorry, these military grade weaponry manufacturers have some competition. I mean, that's the real war we should be concerned about, Uger. Okay, hold on guys. I just need to make sure I've got this straight. So TYT's position now is that Ukraine having jets is bad because, wait a minute. Wait a minute, weren't they arguing, f uh, wait, weren't they arguing for this? Hold on a second, I'm, wait a second, hold on a minute. They were just arguing, it, Cenk was saying that the big concern is that the military industrial complex people don't want them to have competitors. And they were arguing on that, on that side. They were saying that was 
That was one of the concerns. And now they are sarcastically going, oh, wouldn't it be a disaster if these people had competition? What the fuck is going on? Hold on, guys. I got the proper sound effect for this. Hold on. Where's the one? Wait, hold on. Do I have it? Hold on. This is the one. Hold on. Here we go. This is the one. Here we go. Engineering. I have the tools. This is this is the this is the Russian uh this is the Russian engineers when a when a when an F16 crashes. I've got the knowledge. Need a repair? Yes, sir. Moving. I won't be late. Analyzing schematics. Studying blueprints. Got the plans right here. Get me out of here! I'm unarmed! We'll have the power up in 30 seconds, sir. That's, 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 that's all of the Russian engineers, like, happily. I, uh, I'm analyzing the schematics, sir! Technology re researched! Hold on, let's rewatch this and make sure I'm not going crazy. Just to be sure, hold on. Oh, that, you know what, that is the most important part. Turn is the people that sell the F-16 don't want anyone else to be able to produce cheaper F-16s. Okay, so I'm right. This is an argument that he's saying is on his side of things because they're taking the side that the F-16 shouldn't be sent. So Anna is about to react sarcastically to an argument that Cenk was making in favor of their position. Going through them, oh, i.e. the defense the contractors. Oh, that, you know what, that is the most important part of the story, guys. Yeah. I mean, God forbid that these defense contractors, these military manufacturers, oh I mean, I'm sorry, these military grade weaponry manufacturers have some competition. I mean, that's the real war we should be concerned about, Uger. Exactly, but isn't it interesting that the media- Oh my God. Did Anna get like, did Anna like smack her head really hard like a year ago? This is a, this is, this is reminding me of her last big bungle where she just bungles her own argument. She didn't, did she forget that he was making an argument for, for their side of things? And then she just goes and soy faces and sa and s makes it all sarcastic, even though that's, supposedly to be one of the things that you they're trying to tell you that you should be concerned about Russia stealing the tech. Oh my god. Media doesn't mention that. No, it's not interesting. It's the most expected part of the story, imagine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, we went through the same thing with the M1 Abrams tank earlier in this war, and so the defense contractors are, contractors are super nervous about their beloved technology which they have now you know, taking billions, if not trillions, of dollars off the hands of U.S. taxpayers and taxpayers in in Northern Europe, etc. Uh, that technology falling into hands that would allow them to not have a monopoly on those weapons. Okay. For real. Hold on a second. Just gotta, I just gotta be clear about this, hold on. Once again, the M1 Abrams has been in service for since 1980. There were a, M1 Abrams were used in the Persian Gulf War, in the war in Afghanistan, where Russia was also involved, in the Iraq War, in the Egyptian Revolution, uh, in the second Iraq War, in it, they've been used. They were used in in Yemen. So no, actually, there isn't. A, th th that's not the problem. Nobody's fucking nervous that they're going to reverse engineer your your 1980s tank and and produce it cheaper. Uh, just what are you talking about, man? No, I, I, I think this is insane. I think he's just, I think he's just, this is an ass pull. I just, I, I, that's all I can conclude is that this is an ass pull. You can't seriously believe that, that, that like military companies are worried about a tank that was, that was dumped 
by the bucket load all over Iraq, all over Afghanistan, all over the Middle East, M1 Abrams tanks are kicking around, and you're telling me that they're afraid that Russia is gonna use an and use use a fucking uh, a, a little a little monk that goes whoa lo, 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 and they're gonna just copy it and then start producing them for cheaper somehow? No, that doesn't even make sense. That's like a this is like a child's interpretation of of, of warfare and technology. This is an ass poll. And so that's the iceberg of this story that no one else is talking about. By the way, also true of the so-called Pentagon accounting error that you might have heard about. We're gonna talk about that later in the show. Now, John Kirby, who's a spokesperson for the White House, sat down with an uh, sat down for an interview about this new decision to allow for F-16s to be sent to Ukraine. And uh, the big question is, you know, doesn't the Biden administration see this as an escalation of war? What, why the 180 on this topic? Well, he claims, no, no, not at all. Let's watch. Just a short time ago, the Kremlin responded, calling this a quote colossal risk. President Biden's concern from the very beginning with providing F-16s was that it could potentially escalate this war. What assurances does the U.S. have? John Fallon says, remember, TYT is owned by Al Jazeera. They're contractually obliged to defame the West. I don't even care. I think it's great to defame the West. Please defame the West, okay? But please don't do it stupidly. If you're gonna defame the West, don't fucking do it like this. This is just stupid. Like, just it's just obviously false. No, no one is concerned that Russia is gonna copy the M1 Abrams uh, uh, and and produce it cheaper. They have their own tanks and 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 their own arm. They have their own armored divisions. The problem. It's never been a problem of them being produced cheaper. These companies have patents anyway. Like, what are you fucking talking about? From Ukraine that they won't use these F-16s to fire into Russia that could widen this war. I will tell you, Peter, we have had uh, multiple conversations with the Ukrainians uh, about the risk of escalation here. Uh, nobody wants to see World War III. Uh, and uh, we have made it clear that we're not going to encourage or enable Ukraine to strike inside Russian territory. Uh, now, the Ukrainians have been very honest with us and very forthcoming and, fr and quite frankly, very uh, responsible uh, when it comes to the kind of support we're giving them, not using that to go inside Russia. Cool, I'm sure Ukraine would never do any type of offensive attack or would never even consider attacking Russia. Yeah. Is is Anna trying to be like a like a like a Twitch streamer by like responding smugly and sarcastically to everything that's said on the news like <laughs> Leave it to us, okay? We do a way better job, okay? <laughs> Scoffing at the news is not like it's not the territory of a of of a supposed news of a, a supposed news show. Just being like, oh, oh, you mean Ukraine would never fire back? Oh, oh my God, guys, here we go. Except here's the Come on, leave it to us. We got soundboards. We got all kinds of stuff going on. You, that's not, that's not, this is bad TV, this is boring, it sucks, boo! I leave the scoffing at the news to me, okay? We do it better. Right, that broke today. Ukrainian official confirms group of Ukraine allied Russians crossed into Russian territory and attacked town. Let me give you some more context, but before I do, Jenks, seems yeah. like you have some thoughts on this. I do, listen guys, the Ukrainians are not going to want to violate an agreement with America because America could fund, cut off further weapons, etc. that they need. So okay. would they attack the Russians right away? No, unlikely with the F-16s, but it depends on how desperate they get. So let's say they think that we're not going to send them any more aid, which is a possibility at some point. They think, well, we already have the F-16s. And understand why they might want to use them inside Russia, because Russia is firing missiles at Ukraine from inside Russia. And the only How do these people, do these people not listen to their own voice? Russia is fucking bombarding the shit out of Ukrainian cities. You, Russia is firing missiles into the capital city of Ukraine. Russia has been bombing cities into the ground. And they're like, oh no, Ukraine might fire back. Deranged. These people are deranged and inhuman. I, I, I hate 
these fucking fraud ass journalist fakes. These people gross me out. You, one of the things I like the most about being a streamer is that I don't have to fucking dress up any of my shit with all their fake crap, with all their uh, stupid suits and their d dumb looking backgrounds and their stupid news chirons on the bottom of the screen. I don't have to fucking dress up my shit. I can just say what I think. These people are fucking trying to, they're pretzeling themselves into a way uh, to do apologia for a, a, a country and a leader that has been flattening civilian homes into the fucking ground en masse. Like, Russia attacked and invaded Ukraine and has been fucking bombing every city that they can reach. These people have been blowing up hotels, blowing up businesses, blowing up people's houses. An indiscriminate bombing campaign. Are you fucking crazy? What's wrong with you people? What is wrong with these fucking people pretzel themselves into justifying all kinds of shit? It should be easy to say, fuck that shit. It should be easy to say, fuck Putin, fuck this fucking imperial crap, fuck any empire that fires a bunch of missiles into civilian areas and flattens people's homes, innocent people's homes. These people didn't fucking ask for a war. They were living their fucking lives and Russia decided that uh, we watched Putin's speech when he said that he wanted to bring back the original borders of the fucking Russian empire. We watched that shit. And these guys have got to find a way to bend over backwards, shove their head up their own ass, pop their neck back out of their fucking penis, and be like, oh, actually, uh, Putin's fine. R Ukraine is the real concern, guys. Shut the fuck up. Fuck, fuck newscaster fucking frauds. The only way to stop those is to bomb them inside Russia. So it only depends on how desperate the Ukrainians are. Once they have them, they have them. So can we just at least be blunt about how this is an escalation of war? Come on, Cenk, really? It is, like you no, think, I know. You really think Ukraine is under the impression that if they violate any agreement with the United States, that the United States would- I'm sorry, again, this is not, you, I don't think it's fair to argue that this is an escalation of war. There, the Ukrainians are going to keep fighting. Their houses and their cities are being bombed into the ground by an invading force. There is no escalation of war there. The war is already happening. The war has been happening. Ukraine does not have the air power to compete with Russia. They're just getting bombed all over the fucking place. This is insanity. These people have lost their mind. TYT are a bunch of fucking loser frauds and fucking Anna, Anna, Anna Kasparian's fucking troll face ass, soy facing bullshit doesn't belong on, on a news, a fake ass news show, let alone a stream. Jesus Christ. Stop sending them weapons? Are you in- no. Uh, Sophie in chat says, this is super dehumanizing towards Ukrainians. Yeah, it's fucking gross. It's disgusting. These people are the exact, there is no difference between TYT and the ghouls that, the, the, the fucking neoliberal ghouls who come their pants over at CNN over military technology. There's no fucking difference. These people don't actually care about people living or dying. All they care about is pandering to their political, their perceived political position. It's all numbers to them. You think, what do you think, what do you think about the Ukrainians who are fucking living their own goddamn lives, playing video games, fucking going to work, taking care of their kids, walking their dogs, when Russia decided to conscript a bunch of their own people? It's really funny too, because a bunch of innocent people in Russia got forcibly conscripted to go fucking die in Ukraine because Putin is a fucking insane imperialist. And you're trying to tell me that I'm supposed to like feel bad about Ukraine getting to even the ground a little bit? No, dude. The escalation, an escalation of war is letting Russia continue to invade and pound uh, Ukrainian cities into dust. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? These people are, oh my God, it is disgusting. Talk about the dumb, dumb left.
Bluestone says Putin almost said almost to a T the 14 words in, in his annexation speak speech in October. I remember. I remember that shit. It was the most fashy shit we've ever seen. We watched it when it was happening. We covered it on this channel. You can go watch the stream. See? Oh no! They, Come they, on! And look, there's a reason why we would care, and it, you know, a day we don't want instability because that could affect the stock market. So it's not like we have any pure motives, but we do have motives for not escalating past this. But this is definitely an escalation. And by the way, don't get me wrong: will we escalate even further? It's enormously possible. This is a disaster. But, but guys, there's the theater as always and the real world as always and the theater is my god we care about those brave ukrainian these guys are literally sitting in a theater right now just remember that he's talking about theater as they are literally sitting on a studio the modern theater uh downplaying the atrocities played by russia and saying that ukraine getting a handful of f-16s is an escalation of war when Russia has been pounding Ukrainian cities into dust. What a bunch of fucking losers. And is there some truth to that? Yeah, I think there's some truth to that for some people, right? But the, but, but that's mainly the theater. When you get to the real world, the real world is how much are people gonna make off of it? And so it's not just the defense contractors. Hey, how it's much do you think TYT is making off of this as they run ad after ad on the on the little thing here? Oh, subscribe in Prime, subscribe to our Patreon, subscribe, subscribe, pay for YouTube Premium, give us more donations. So, who's, so who's making money now, huh? The oil and gas industry, and we cut off the Russians' uh, gas supply into Europe. Now we're replacing their supply. So, and then there's the banks who uh, gambled on the gas, and there's the banks who gamble on the defense contract. At least, at least I have the courage to just admit that I'm a fucking YouTuber. At least I have the spine and the and the and the morality to just tell you guys. I'm a politically motivated YouTuber. I talk about politics. If you think my ideas are cool, support me. These fucking guys are like, no, we're a serious news source. Join the TYT nation now. Only $35 a month to join the, the TYT mug club. Fuckers. And they also run an ungodly amount of ads on their shows. So there is... A world like billion, probably hundreds of billions of dollars here on not probably definitely on the line uh, for all those different industries, and they're constantly sending lobbyists to talk to politicians, including the White House, lobby, 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 to make themselves more money. They don't care about our interests, the Ukrainian interests, etc. And that is what's driving a lot of these decisions. Mm -hmm. While the press okay. puts on a play about humanitarian this. You know, they're America's worried about escalation. That damn, they're they're getting t they're getting Tim Pool esque over here. The mainstream media, the lamestream woke media, is putting on a show. You guys know that like Fox News is fucking mega anti Ukraine, and they're the biggest mainstream media uh, channel in the United States. They're anti Ukraine. Bro, what are you fucking talking about, bro? When in reality, most of the decision makers are worried about how much money everybody's gonna make. Let's discuss the decision makers, shall we? Mm -hmm. uh, namely, the national security advisor who played a key role in persuading Joe Biden to allow for the transfer of the F-16s to Ukraine. And that person's name is Anthony Blinken. Now, what was Anthony Blinken up to? After he was advising the Obama administration on foreign policy in Afghanistan, you know, the same foreign policy that extended and expanded upon Bush era trash foreign policy. What did he do after that, right? That little uh, space in time uh, where, you know, it was between Obama and now the Biden administration. Humanitarian work is my yeah. guess, no, top guess. No, no. Working he, with the homeless. No interest in that. Uh, in mm, fact, no. he, <laughs> he. Whoa, whoa, don't bring up the homeless around Anna Kasparian. Better be careful. Whoa, Chink, careful. She might pull out her gun. It was part of a consulting group specifically having to do with getting defense contractors in the same room as government officials. No, yeah. really? Mm, in essence, lobbying yeah. for defense contractors between government jobs in, in, in at State Department? Huh, well, golly gee, I bet this is giant news to the people in Washington. Okay.
But hold on a minute. Again, I'm going to go back to their own argument. They said that that the big concern was from military industrial complex not wanting their technology to be stolen. So which one is it? Is the military industrial complex on the side of Ukraine against the side of Ukraine? lobbying for the war in Ukraine or lobbying against it? Because they've said both throughout this conversation. Washington and the reporters are gonna clamor to cover this obvious conflict of interest. So as Washington Post reported, let's go to graphic five here. Blinken played a similar role when NATO was at an impasse over whether to provide modern tanks to Ukraine. At the time, Germany was hesitant to approve the transfer of Leopard 2 tanks, a roadblock that was overcome when Blinken pushed the White House to approve the transfer of M1 Abrams tanks over Pentagon reluctance. Now prior to Blinken's service, Serving as okay. Secretary of State for Biden's administration, Blinken ran a defense related consulting firm known as West Exec. In fact, when Biden tapped him to be part of his administration, I remember researching this and writing a piece on this because I thought that there was you know, some conflicts of interest here. And surely with the development of this war in Ukraine, the conflicts of interest are pretty brazen and pretty obvious. So West Exec did not respond when asked for a list of its clients. But according to people familiar with the arrangement, they include Shield AI, a San Diego based company that makes surveillance drones and signed a contract worth more as much as $7.2 million with the Air Force to deliver artificial intelligence tools to help drones operate in combat missions. Blinken and Michelle Flournoy, another person who is you know, close with Biden, have served as advisors to Pine Island Capital, which raised $218 million for a new fund to finance investments in military and aerospace companies, among other targets. So, okay, I, I, I agree with them that uh, the revolving door of military industrial complex ghouls is fucked up. They're just like, I don't disagree with them on that. And and Anthony Blinken absolutely sounds like a piece of shit. But what I want to understand is how this directly ties to whether or not it's a good or bad thing that Ukraine is going to have two F-16s or three F-16s or whatever it is. Like, like, do you think there would not be military industrial complex ghouls pushing a Republican? Like they just said that, I mean, I assume these people didn't support the Iraq war, which was a different guy pushing for that conflict. And that was an invasion we did. Blinken has a history of working on behalf of defense contractors and yes. getting them sweet, sweet deals with the federal government. Um, yeah. And that's that's yeah. exactly what I see here. I see this as an opportunity to make money for okay. these defense contractors. It's pretty disgusting because I don't trust, I mean, do we really trust the Pentagon when they can't even pass a single financial audit? But the Pentagon, wait, you just said in the quote you just, you just said the Pentagon was against putting the M1 Abrams in. So what is the, what, this guy advocated against the Pentagon. They don't know what they're talking about. I just don't think they know what they're talking about. I think they're just saying activation words to their audience. In the quote she just read, it said that Blinken advocated against the, the Pentagon. The Pentagon was pushing not to give them M1 Abrams and Blinken advocated in opposition to the Pentagon. So in, according to her argument, the Pentagon was on her side of things. They haven't passed one. Do we really have trust and faith in them uh, in regard to where the military weaponry is ending up? Do they have a full accounting of it? No, of course not, uh, don't be ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> and so all of this is to enrich those folks. But guys, at the same time, uh, the Ukrainians should get our help. Uh, and the Russians definitely invaded them and they were definitely wrong and it is definitely an imperial exercise. And uh, and so we're stuck in the middle ground here where we wanna help uh, good people like us wanna help the Ukrainians. Okay, then push without, the peace without, talks. Without getting robbed in the process. Yeah, peace talks. 
Okay, we don't actually, the, the United States government isn't actually in. What peace talks, what peace talk, okay, I'm serious. I'm being really serious here. What peace talks can you have with a guy who said Ukraine belongs to us, we are going to take Ukraine, and if anyone tries to stop us, we'll nuke the entire world? What peace talk can you have with someone behaving like that? What peace talk, like, and how, do you, you don't think that the Ukrainians don't want this to stop? The, the terms that Putin wants is for their country to belong to him. The, a peace talk would involve definitively sacrificing the lives of Ukrainians for Putin's imperial ambitions. Cenk just laid it out here, but Anna has to fucking freak out and soy over for Putin. What the fuck is going on? What the absolute fuck is going on with these people? Interested in ending the war. Let's be 100% honest well, about that. Well, that's definitely true because they're not encouraging peace talks because that, that is not in the Ukrainian interest, if you ask me. And the reason is that the US has a separate interest is because the longer the war goes, the more Russia is depleted. And you know, from our national security interest, the people in charge want Russia as depleted as possible. It's a proxy war. So it says it's a proxy war and we're not the ones that are direct. That's not a proxy war. It's not a proxy war. Russia just invaded Ukraine. It's an annexation war. That's not what a proxy war is, you fucking idiot. Are you guys crazy? Are these people insane? Russia invaded to annex a neighboring country. They weren't targeting the US. The US has interest because our allies surround Ukraine. What the fuck? Oh, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> That's not what a proxy war is. That's not what a fucking proxy war is. A proxy war, a proxy war was like Afghanistan. A proxy war is when you have uh, 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 a a a country. Let's let's pick another example of a proxy war. Although I do think Afghanistan is a perfectly fine option. Uh, a proxy war is when you have a country with with multiple sides. Some sides are are conveniently allied with one portion, with one large country, and some sides are conveniently allied with another portion. And each of the larger uh, of another powerful country and the two powerful countries dump money and arms into the respective sides inside that country so that they can fight to to end up hopefully winning over the support of that country and functionally having a puppet state under their control. You have a civil war and America gives a bunch of money to one side so that that side wins and then they're forever in debt to America. This is not a proxy war. Russia just invaded Ukraine and wants to annex Ukraine. Directly involved Russia is they're the ones that are getting weaker and weaker and weaker as they, their military gets depleted and run into the ground. Uh, and even if they quote unquote win and get parts- Whose fault is that? Russia chose to invade. Russia conscripted fucking soldiers of its population forcibly on threat of prison. We're not talking like they are using volunteer forces. They didn't even pull in America. They fucking instituted a draft. Of Ukraine, still their military will have been devastated. Their pipelines uh, will have been deranged. shut down. Or the sanctions will blown have, up. Yeah, and, yeah, or blown up, and that literally happened. And it's probably one of our allies, if not us Thank directly. You, Hannah, Angelina. Uh, and 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 so we will take advantage of all the things that happen because of the war. And so it's, but that puts good people in the same basket as people who have no interest in uh, humanitarian issues and are just trying to make a buck off this. Obviously, and it's an uncomfortable that's, basket. That's true about every single fucking conflict in the world. That's true about the entire fucking, that's all of geopolitics. That's absolutely, I, I don't, obviously that's true. You're obviously there's going to be vultures circling. There's obviously going to be people who are engaging this on either side. That doesn't mean that you take the side of Putin just because you think that someone bad will agree with you. That's fucking stupid as shit.
Be and keep in mind that this is solidifying the alliance between Russia and China. So while this is a proxy war and the thinking among the State Department is that this is weakening Russia, it is also strengthening its relationship with China. Uh, I should also note that is China it? happens to be one of the countries that is pushing for peace talks. Uh, but the United States, because of its interest in wanting to weaken Russia, is really unwilling to push for that. The other thing I wanted to mention is that the United States- I, I think that's a big citation needed. I don't know that that's true. I don't actually know that that's true. I don't know that this tr struggle is significantly strengthening Russia and China's relations. Intends to continue this war for at least 18 months, if not longer. If you don't believe me, take a look at this final video. President Zelensky has been begging for them for more than a year. President Biden has resisted until this point. So what changed? Nothing changed. I mean, we have been evolving our support for Ukraine as the war has evolved. And when we're talking about fighter aircraft, that's really not designed to help us in the immediate future here with the counteroffensive. The training alone, John, could take 18 months, it, the defense secretary. Well, defense that's, that's, a, that's, that's an initial estimate. As the war has evolved, we've also started to have conversations with the Ukrainians about long-term defense needs because when this war is over, whenever that is and under what conditions, they're still gonna have a long border with Russia. They're still gonna need significant defense support. So at least 18 months just to train the soldiers in Ukraine how to use the F-16s, at least 18 months. So no yeah. end in sight. Let's just be absolutely clear about that. Well, that doesn't mean anything though. We already had, we have military people training people in every country in the world. That doesn't, that doesn't equate to the same thing as United States being involved directly in the conflict. Like obviously, obviously it's terrible that the United States has covered the world with its military bases, but us training people to use technology or not even us in this case, uh, I guess maybe it is. I don't. I don't know if he was talking about na like our allies training them because what Anna, what they said at the beginning was that we weren't giving them F-16s. Our allies were giving them F-16s. So I don't know for sure if they're talking about U.S. people training them or not. Maybe maybe I just missed something. Regardless, having military people train other people is happening all over the world all the time. I don't think that that guarantees. 18 months of US involvement in this conflict. You wanna know what guarantees US involvement in this conflict? Russia invading Ukraine. There's a really simple answer. There's a much easier answer. Let's just use the, uh, let's just use the fucking razor there, okay? You can cut the Gordian knot with a very simple answer, which is the thing that guarantees the United States fucking involvement is the fact that Russia invaded Ukraine a place of significant NATO strategic interest. Obviously, a, in, a invasion by a modern military into a state that borders a bunch of NATO states and has ties to a bunch of other countries is going to guarantee US interest, obviously. It's not the fucking jets that are gonna do it, it's the fact that there's an invasion at all. That. And in those 18 months, I'm just curious, how many times does the Biden administration intend to tap Congress to appropriate hundreds of billions of dollars more to assist in the war effort in Ukraine? Yeah. Well, by the way, simultaneously nickel and diming the American people, right? Right now, Biden is engaging in negotiations with Kevin McCarthy to raise the debt ceiling, and he is seriously considering work requirements for. Americans who are so poor, who are so poverty stricken that they would need to do uh, prove that they're looking for work or engaging in work in order to get welfare benefits. Yeah, that that's obviously shitty, fuck Biden. But what, is, what does that have to do at all with this situation or the morality of the situation? This is just, again, I, I, I guess I just gotta bring it back. I guess I just gotta bring the, uh, I guess I just gotta bring back the, the fucking, here we go, just bring it back. It's just fucking neuron activation. They clearly need because they're struggling financially. So nickel and dime the American people continue this now new endless war with you know Russia, it's a proxy war. It's just, I don't know. I, I think that the way the US has now decided to handle this is pretty disastrous and continues to get worse. So some estimates have them being trained by the fall. It's a what a big fat nothing burger, man. TYT is just so bad these days.
they had you know they had to do this segment because they knew that their audience is super super triggered about uh, about the they them army of Ukraine fighting back against the based and chad pilled Russian Z fighters or whatever, you know their stupid dumb dumb left audience was like, oh, why aren't you guys talking about Ukraine? And Jenk was like, ooh, we could make some fucking fat cash if we if we virtue signaled against Ukraine, but let's not go too hard. Ooh, mm. and then Anna was just like, no, fuck Ukraine. Uh, Joe Biden is ripping off the Americans to help dirty Ukrainians. Ah! Oh, wow, isn't that interesting? They're gonna download the technology for an M1 Abrams tank. That'll never happen. Oh, you mean to tell me that the military industrial complex, Ukraine, Putin, Putin, Ukraine, uh, work requirements, Kevin McCarthy, Joe Biden? Man, fuck these people. <laughs> fuck these people. <laughs> oh, fuck these people so much. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh. I really I really don't feel like like Anna used to be this bad. I really don't. I feel like I watched I used to watch Anna Kasparian talk with Michael Brooks and I felt like she was way more careful. Maybe something just broke. Maybe she just got blackpilled and was just like, "All right, I'm done now. It's time to just sell out completely." But the Anna Kasparian that we've seen for the last few months is like laughable. Like this is just, this was just a hilariously bad segment. It's so pathetic. Yeah, transphobia melts the brain, it turns out. Actually, I think it's, a, I think like transphobia is the symptom that reveals that the brain is melting. The transphobia itself doesn't melt the brain, but, a, oh, but only a melting brain can engage in transphobia, if that makes sense. Some states already have work requirements. Yeah, and Joe Biden is a fucking cowardly piece of shit for even considering work requirements. Work requirements are fucking stupid and expensive. Real quick, just so you guys understand that I don't think that like Anna is wrong to be mad about work requirements. Work requirements are terrible. They make welfare more expensive and harder to access. They are a lose-lose for everyone except Republicans who want welfare to be defunded. They want welfare to be ridiculously expensive so that they can go, oh my God, we gotta make cuts to welfare. And they want welfare to be hard to access so that they can say, uh, so they can ultimately defund welfare. They don't want people receiving welfare. They want to get rid of it. And so this is one of the ways they do it. They make it really difficult to access and super, super expensive to administer. So less people get welfare and it costs the government more which means they have a bargaining chip to shut down welfare programs. It's a disgusting and slimy tactic, and Joe Biden is a fucking fool for even considering compromising because of the, the hostage situation around the debt ceiling. It's ridiculous. All right. My lovely imps, if you enjoy an honest broadcaster, a somebody who doesn't have the fucking fake pretension of pretending to be some like official news source while ultimately just belching out stupid ass opinions someone who actually speaks to you like a fucking thinking person fucking hit subscribe down below smash that subscribe button press like and make sure you leave some comments tell me what you think about this did i mess up everything about ukraine did i get facts wrong tell me down below in the comments because i would love to see what you have to say Oh my goodness, what a mess.